they couldn't hear any of that anyway. So I'll start from here. No, it's not live. It's just recording. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have to start again because in true ADP fashion, we had no audio, so we're starting again. Welcome to, and thank you for coming, the beautiful Sedge, the amazing Sedge. If you watched us last year, uh, Sedge joined us around April time, April. did you say? Um, and she shared all the beautiful tools, basically, for manifesting a mindset. And the episode was how to manifest a Rolls Royce which was my idea because I've always wanted a Rolls Royce. I am sad to report I currently don't have a Rolls Royce, but I have many of the things that you helped me to uh, tackle down, put into my goal card. Yes. And they're happening. <laughs> and it's exciting, isn't it? 100%. It's really cool. But for people that don't know you yet, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Sedge and I am the founder of River Training Services. And um, my journey was that I started coaching. I was working with children um, and then kind of naturally developed into training. Um, so now we deliver training around mindset, mental health, suicide awareness, health and safety, um, fire safety. Wow. So there's a, there's a lot. We offer a lot of um, accredited qualifications and then a lot of workshops and there's e-learning as well. Oh. Um, so we've got about 30 accredited courses and about 42 um, e-learning courses. Oh, my word. So, yeah, it's quite exciting. And the journey's been exciting for us as well. And we've got a great team. So, yes, yeah, all going in the yeah. right direction. You um, it very much corrected me earlier when I said I wanted to know, you know, what made you change career paths. And she says, no, 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 Steph. <laughs> Get it right. I have expanded. This is not a, a change at all. And it really does sound like, you know, that what you had as a seed, delivering the workshops, the one-to-one, -one, you've really grown that into credited courses yes it is it's been a long journey but it's an exciting one 100 it sounds exciting so what made you make that pivot almost that decide to expand so i think it was when just learning about um people's struggles around mental health and i'm quite passionate about supporting people around mental health and suicide awareness and all of those kind of things around mindset as well and then when I seen the statistics around mental health, I just wanted to kind of do something to be that change and help. And especially in the construction sector, um, you know, men struggle with mental health a lot. 75% of men are struggling with mental health. Um, suicide in the construction sector is at an all time high. And we just wanted to be that change. So River Training Services is somebody, well, the organization is just out there to kind of be that change by offering the training, how people can support their colleagues, um, how employers can support their like, employees. Um, so yeah, it's all very exciting. And the other exciting courses that we're offering are um, the IOSH. So IOSH Managing Safely and also IOSH uh, Managing Occupational Health and Wellbeing, which allows employers to support their um, team around mindset, about well-being, and just even mental health and all of those kind of areas that people need support. It's brilliant. I think we talk about it a lot. How can your workplace um, help you with things that you're dealing with on a personal basis, whether it is situational with a family member or something's happening at home or you yourself are diagnosed with or some sort of uh, mental health problem, a, a physical issue or whatever. And we're seeing that um, a lot of employers are letting people down, especially within the ADHD community. Yes. Getting a job can be very difficult. And once you've got that job, then it's a whole different task trying to get the support that you need to be able to do that job. So you're basically allowing or giving the teachings to these employers to be able to deliver this to their staff. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, and just supporting them. And sometimes, you know, employers aren't able to support directly, but then we give them the training to be able to 
signpost um, their employees as well. So it's all very exciting. And, you know, one of the exciting things that we offer is a bespoke tailor-made solution for employers. So we go into organizations, we look at their staffing structure, we then put a whole training plan together, and then we kind of manage that training plan for them. So it might be that their first aid is due for renewal or mental health is due for renewal. And then we will remind them that these courses are up for renewal. We manage their whole training package. So it might be that we go in-house and deliver courses for them. And some courses might be delivered online. Some are e-learning courses, but we manage the whole training package, which takes the way takes away the stress for an employer. And they're still able to invest in their people and they're still able to look after their people but we manage everything for them and in that package as well we offer a focus group sessions as well so we go into the companies and we will have like focus groups where employees can come and talk about mental health ADHD anything that is bothering them mindset anything and we offer that either once a quarter or once a month and we'll put little focus groups together and then provide this service as well I love that I feel like this is great to the, to my brain that uh I've struggled with employment for a lot of my life and uh how I've been treated in certain ways so I think you know this is so important and it's really personally to me touching that you've gone into this because it's so vital and I hope that more companies get to employ things like this so how do how does a company get hold of you if that's what they're looking to do so we've got a website um you can access any of our courses through our website um we've got open courses that are available so we're delivering a mindset workshop for example in Derby on the 4th of March we're delivering a mindset workshop in Leicester on the 7th of March and then we've got various other open courses that anybody can jump onto um these are face-to-face courses and then all of the e-learning courses and I mean if you visit our website you can have a look at what we offer and um fill in the inquiry form and kind of somebody will get back to you that's awesome yeah if you yourself are interested that it will be in the link on the description below um moving on from uh your academic side your academic (laughs) professional side are you still using manifestation in your life absolutely absolutely i think um manifesting becomes a way of life and i think it's about setting those goals and then achieving them without having the blocks of why I can't do it or how do I do it so anything is achievable even the Rolls Royce there even the Rolls Royce one day <laughs> like I said to you just get the um, logo and stick it on your steering <laughs> that's gonna happen yeah, okay absolutely. So, yeah, manifesting is just a a way of life. And I think sometimes we do it subconsciously. And even for me, I didn't know how all of this was going to happen um, for the growth and expansion of the business and even just working with various people. But it happens because once you've put it out there that this is what I want to achieve and this is my goal, then the right people come into your life. And, you know, you don't need to worry about how the how happens along the way and um i'm i'm very blessed that i've got an amazing team around me the support um we're also part of a larger organization which is scp group and um so yeah it's very exciting because we all work together and everybody's working towards a common goal so it's it's all going in the right direction and it's super exciting it feels like you've manifested every single part of this. The you know the people that are now work under you that are performing all these tasks that you know you set up all these different things and they're happening within a year by the sounds of it. A lot yeah. of these plans. Yeah, a lot of it happened. So we, I put it out there. I think it was just after the workshop that we did. Um, I put it out there. I think it was January last year and. By August, River Training Services was set up and so within eight months um, and I didn't have it all figured out. And even now, there's still a lot of things that we're putting into place and there's certain things that need implementing. But 
with the right mindset, it's all achievable. And that's where it starts. It It is all to do with mindset. 100%. I mean, I, I loved the last episode. If you've not seen it, Lindsay took the whole job. I was behind the camera. So I'm actually quite happy that I get it all scheduled to myself right now because that mindset is such a key part. It's all right taking away these tools and, oh, I just need to manifest it. I just need to write it down. I just need to um, give myself these affirmations every day. But if you're not in that mindset, getting out of your own way <laughs> is 10 times harder. Yes, because sometimes we are our own blocks and we don't achieve the goals that we've set out because we wonder why it can't happen or how it's going to happen. And when we start putting those blocks in front of us, then the goal is not going to be achieved. 100%. I feel like a, a core issue that I've had, I'd say that's been getting worse for maybe five years now, is getting back to people. <laughs> and what are you laughing for? <laughs> I am victim of this. 100%. I am awful at this and contacting her today, I was just like, I saw that last message you'd sent me that I just hadn't replied to. And it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I'm going to say it with my chest. Yes. Because that is the only way that I'm going to be able to change this. I think just by being completely honest. Yes. 100%. I. For multiple reasons, whether a text comes through when I'm busy or whatever, and it starts off as that initial memory problem or action problem, and then it turns into shame. And that is where most of my friendships, unfortunately, have now been left at because I am too shameful to go back to them and try and connect again, worried that I'm just going to let them down. But you've explained it to me. I, these are my paradigm. Yes. What is a paradigm for anyone that doesn't understand? So paradigm is your thoughts, your behaviors, your characteristics. Um, so say if somebody is saying, I can't lose weight or I can't, um, money doesn't grow on trees. Um, and I use this example quite a lot or I'm always late, right? Those are paradigms because you've already said it and you've already thought it, then your actions kind of align with that thought pattern. So when you say, I don't reply to people or I fail to reply to people or whatever it is that you're saying, that is your paradigm. And then that continues. And then that behavior goes on to the following year. And then what happens is then you feel guilty and you don't know how to then reply to people. So that that's one of your paradigms, which I think we're going to work on. Yeah, you mentioned another one, I'm always late. <laughs> And this is what I mean. I was explaining to Sedge that I feel like I've got so many of these paradigms that it becomes, again, I've made another mountain for myself to try and tackle. So what would you suggest that I do? You know, I'm always late. I'm. A, what do I do with these sentences? Do I just don't say them to myself? No. So what you need to do is you find the polar opposite. So if you're saying that, say money doesn't grow on trees, if that's your paradigm, that's your block. So then your behavior is going to be that I can't afford this. So you're coming from a okay. place of lack. Okay. So the only way to change that is the same way that it came into your mind, which is through repetition. So if you then change it to the polar opposite, which is money comes to me effortlessly, then you every time you start saying the old paradigm, remind yourself that that no longer exists. And the new paradigm is money comes to me effortlessly. Okay. okay? So if you're saying that your paradigm is that you're always late, then your new paradigm would be I'm always on time or mm -hmm. I'm always early, whichever one it is. So every time you think that you're saying I'm always late, mm -hmm then you need to just remind yourself the new paradigm, okay? Now, if okay. this doesn't happen overnight, <laughs> you won't change overnight because what you've got to remember is paradigms are set like a thermostat. The room is set at 30 degrees, right? So your paradigm is set at, I'm always late, right? Somebody opens the door and there's a slight change in temperature and then when the door's closed, the temperature goes back to 30 degrees, Okay, so your paradigm will be I'm always late and then temporarily your paradigm will change to being on time. You might be on time for a week. You might be on time for a month. And then what happens is once that door has closed again, the paradigm goes back to being late. 
The only way to change it is through repetition. So changing that thermostat, changing the way you think, changing the way that you behave. So then start being on time. And what you'll find is even the times that you're trying to be on time and you've managed to get ready and everything is in place and you are ready to leave on time and be on time, you will hit traffic because your paradigm is set at being late. Yeah. So then you're already putting it out there that I'm late. And even though you left on time, oh, dear. something else has happened for you to then be late because you've set your paradigm as being late. Okay. You know what? Yeah, you've just hit... So you're like, I, I do that all the time. I know I'm late, paradigm. So I will get ready an hour earlier than what I'm supposed to be. And you're right. It, something happens. The cat throws up. Something stops me leaving the house. Normally, I can't find my keys. I can't find something. And it's that. And then I get in the car and then I'm stuck behind Bozo, the driver, every single time. And I'm just like, oh, God, why? Because I was on time. Yes. But it's because that whole time I'm going, because I'm always late, because I'm always late, rather than being like, I'm always on time. And I should just be, OK, replacing that useless sentence <laughs> with one that's actually going to benefit me. I love that. But the way you can do this, so I'll send you a spreadsheet. And basically what you're going to do is list all of the paradigms that you want to change. So these are all this is all part of mindset. So list everything that you want to change and then write the polar opposite of each one of these paradigms, right? And okay. what you'll find is this is an ongoing thing. So it's me giving you a tool to put into your toolbox. And like I've mentioned before, you'll get a toolbox and then you'll learn how to use this along the way. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is you'll, you'll fall back. There'll be times when you come off track and you've just got to then remind yourself that the new paradigm is X. And yeah. then work through each one of these paradigms one at a time. And once it then becomes a habit, that's then your new way of life. That's your new okay. paradigm. So they didn't just come into your life just overnight at the click of a finger. They they happened over time, like through repetition, and you kept being late. And then you kept telling yourself that you're late. So then that is what kept happening. Right, so okay. It's just a matter of changing it one at a time. Yeah, that's what thing I, you say one thing at a time, because I think that's what was initially worrying me this idea of you know i've got so many paradigms just one at a time you don't need to put pressure it's okay otherwise you'll be late for that <laughs> it's okay it's okay hun. you don't have to do that why are you doing that to yourself <laughs> pressure on yourself <laughs> just be on time one time <laughs> do you know what no because that'll be my paradigm i'll be on time one time and then back to but um okay yeah so Go through them, write them, and one at a time. Simple. Write the polar opposite of what it is that you want to change. Love that. And then keep doing it. It's through repetition that we create paradigms. And over the years, you'll find in six months' time, you'll, you'll be in a different place in your life because now you're going to be on time. So you're in a different place now. And in six months time, you're on time, but then there is another paradigm. So then you'll need to change that. Right, so okay. Paradigms is an ongoing thing to change. And like I said, it's part of your mindset. Right. Okay. So it's not like completed it, mate. Like it's something you want to completely yes, always work day. out. We're all a work in progress every day. I love that. <laughs> We're just like, you know, because I know it must be a common uh, feeling for a lot of people with ADHD, autism, when you feel like, you know, people say, why don't you just, it's just that, it's just that. And in your head, you know, you've got all these things. So just having a conversation with someone that's able to say, get rid of all this extra BS. It's not helping you. Focus on this, streamline what you're trying to do. And it just, it clears my brain yes. talking to you. <laughs> And it's almost like having this veil of ignorance. So anything that is not serving you or anything that is not benefiting you, get rid of it. It's taking up brain like brain energy and all of that stuff that you don't need to waste on that. Like just focus on what your goal is. Right. And yeah. that's it. Okay. Yeah. It's <laughs> I have full trust in you. Like you were saying that you your um, first coaching sessions with Lindsay were 2021. Yes, I think it was about 21 or even it could have been 2020. I can't remember. I think it was, yeah, around then. 
I just feel like if you can help her get all her thoughts in an order and uh, help her apply She's it in a, a long way, hasn't she? Miss Bus Driver. I remember actually the first um, the first session that I had with Lindsay and we talked about goals then and she said, I want to buy a bus. And <laughs> so, that face was generally what she got telling people she was going to buy a yeah, bus. So it was just like, <laughs> for, for what? And she was like, I, d I don't know, but I want to buy a bus. And then it was only when we started exploring why she wanted to buy the bus and we were like delving deeper into all of these things. And she said, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I said, right, stop right there. We don't need to worry about the how right now. And what we need to focus on is the fact that you want a bus. And Lindsay has a bus now. <laughs> it's quite exciting, isn't it? And she's doing amazing, doing it up and renovating and all of that stuff. And who would have thought that little Lindsay could like yeah. do all of the stuff that she's doing on this bus? I've got some footage. I'll have to put it in here. Like she just gets on the bus and she just she's tiny compared to this bus. I mean, it is a double decker yes. bus. It's not like a little coach or a school bus that I've seen some people change. Like it is a full double decker bus. Like if it pulled up, you'd be sticking your arm out trying yes. to get on it. Yeah. It's massive. And there she is uh, next week, I believe. She's the whole week just learning. And then on the Fridays, I test. And I, to me, I'm just like, I don't even want that stress in my life. But for some reason to her, she looks at it and goes, that's what I need. <laughs> and so, yeah, if I can have a, an inch of that rub off on me, I think I'll be unstoppable. But you've got it within you already. And we've just discussed as well that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> you've got it within you and it's like we've discussed like if there's things that are out there that you want you've just got to go and do it and you know it's it's our fear that holds us back often isn't it and again it's just and I keep going back to the fact that it's all to do with mindset and if you think of your mind as your headquarters as your control room and if everything is working correctly and maintenance is right in your control room and everything is working in your mind then everything else will flow better definitely it's that maintenance isn't it I like yes. I'll set up the job but I'll never come and maintain the task or the, that mindset to be able to carry on it only lasts for like you said that week that short period of time that I think I'm managing it but without that you know reflection once a week look how did that benefit you what do I need to change you know it's the backpack yes. theory right yeah and I think you know sometimes you've got to see it as um your light bulbs need changing right and without changing that light bulb it's just gonna carry on being dark right, right? so if you see <laughs> it's been bit in my... we've got a few light bulbs missing <laughs> i recently recently changed them i forget that i have and i walk around with the dark lights off <laughs> your phone light aren't you to get around forget on forgetting that you have actually changed that light bulb but yeah it, it, it is just that maintaining the mindset and maintaining just a healthy mind, then having a healthy mind also impacts your physical well-being as well. 100%. So if your mind's not healthy, then you're going to start feeling tired. You feel that fatigue. You feel all of those things that aches and pains and things. And this is why we... We're promoting the IOSH, Managing Occupational Health and Wellbeing, so much because we want employers to be able to look after their staff. And if the employees are happy and healthy, you have a better productive workforce. And then that helps with staff turnover. It helps with staff retention. So this is what we're trying to promote, that how important it is to have not just physical health, but mental health as well. Yeah. Um, because... Right now, just normal stresses of life impact people every single day, don't they? Definitely. Stress is the biggest killer Yes. in terms of what it does to you if you hold on to it and you don't know how to manage it. And again, this maintenance will allow you to get rid of that stress that, or at least observe it. What do I do about it? Fix it before mm -hmm. it's put under the carpet or you've left it too long and then you can't text them back. And <laughs> <laughs> no, but we also said that this was to do with priorities as well. So sometimes 
today you replied to me straight away, didn't you? And it's about the fact that something needed doing and you had to get on it because there was there was a time frame, wasn't there? There was a window where you needed to reply. And it was a matter of like, right, I need to do this because Sage is only available for so many hours. Um, and then after that, you were busy or Lindsay was busy or I was busy and we weren't able to do this. So you made it a priority to get back yeah. to me. However, when I contacted you last year, I was ignored. Oh, did <laughs> Literally, there should be a support group for <laughs> it's procrastinating. Uh, just for people that have not texted back, I think there's a big room. You could deliver a workshop and make a lot of money from all the people in that room, I think. <laughs> no, 100%. And I think, you know, identifying it and realizing that because. I said to you earlier, what do I do? I'm so worried that these people, I'll just get the response of why are you messaging me? It's been ages. And he said, like, what does it matter? If you've done your bit, if you've made your clear intentions known, if you've apologized, approached with empathy, you said, then what does it matter? If I get a bad response, then I kind of have to own that. Maybe I deserve it a little so bit. And that's... Reaching out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I was about to say, there's like three people. And as I say that, I go, oh, no, four. Oh, wait, no, five. Oh, wait, actually, you know, there's a register of you. So maybe I should uh, a generalized to everyone that I haven't messaged back in the last few years ever. Um, I am really sorry. It isn't. Uh, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> Trying to make amends here. <laughs> I, it is my fault, but I am very, very sorry that I've done that. And I would really like the opportunity to try and make a lot of these friendships. <laughs> I hope you. What's so funny right now? <laughs> Some people will understand, and hopefully, those that didn't understand will now understand with you reaching out. So. It's embarrassing. I said earlier, it's like the work walk of shame. Like I had to message you. There was no other choice. It feels like I'm walking with my pants around my ankles trying to get home after a stupid night out of bad decisions. It makes me feel so shameful. And I'm like, oh, yeah, me again, especially to ask for a favor. And I just think, oh. So, yeah, I, back to my vulnerable self. <laughs> This is what I mean. I need um, to be laughed at. I need to experience this because that in turn makes me realize it is a human disposition. I'm not like an alien that's no one's ever done this before. But at the same time, whether I intentionally mean to ghost or not, I'm probably having the same effect as if I was intentionally. Do you know what I mean? And I don't want that. I don't want to hurt people. And I also really miss my friendships. I really miss them. Do you know what another part of it is? Maybe you can help me understand is when I was younger, I blew everything off for my friends. I was like, I don't want to be here. I do everything. And then I got to the point where I was like, if I don't concentrate professionally, I'm going to be on benefits my whole life. And it seems like since making that kind of change, since trying to, I almost don't allow myself the social time anymore. And that's where it's screwing me up. So when it comes to work and stuff like this, it's like, yeah, like I'm, I'm doing it. And when it comes to a, just a simple catch up coffee with people that I really miss, I just, it gets to the end of every day. I lie there and I get like a list of all the things I haven't done. And that includes all these people I've not messaged back. So do you think you could make a list of all of the people that you would like to get back in touch with yes. and maybe contact one person every other day? Okay. Just to reach out and just to say, hey, how you doing? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, just see who replies. And if you say every other day, then it's not that much pressure. So it's you just putting the message out, right? Yep. And then seeing what comes back. If you get this message, <laughs> please be kind on the reply. Even if you're done with me, just be like, peace and love. Like, nice. Yeah. I appreciate the attempt, but no, thank you. But if you get the text and you're like, oh, yeah, I miss you, girl. I thought, like, something was up. No, I'm just an idiot. And I'm <laughs> excited to get in touch with people. I'm, I feel like you've just given me this, like, whole new lease of, like, 
excitement and like, I can do this. Yeah. And I think it's just about putting it in place in a way that like you're really good at doing all of these things with the podcasts and all of the lives as well. And um, just getting it out there and editing and all of those bits. You're brilliant at it. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. <laughs> so now just contact people and do it. You know what? I say one every other day. It could be one a week. Don't put the pressure on yourself to say, right, I need to do this. But make your list first and then work down. Just, I mean, I love lists. I, I use lists. I make a list for a list. So, so <laughs> a list for a list. Yeah, so I need this list and this list. So, yeah, I love lists. Love that. But this is the way I function. This is the way I think it's easier for me to make sure that things get done. Okay. So if you were to tell people what are the tools you can use, like a planner or whatever, what are the things, the non-negotiables that you use in your life to make things happen? Okay. So I use a planner and um, it's a really simple planner. So it's just the week um, listed at, at the top. So all the days listed at the top and then down one side, well, underneath the day, it will have just boxes so what I do is I make a list of every Sunday about four o'clock um I say every Sunday most Sundays um I make a list of everything that I need to do and sometimes I'll do it for two weeks and I use highlighters and I'll highlight social events in a certain color I'll do family events or anything to do with the children or anything that I need to do within our home environment in a certain color like blue anything that is to do with work will be in a pink or green or whatever it is so I use colors and then this way I can see for the whole week what I need to do and if I feel that there's too many social events right now there's no social events but if you feel that there's too many of one color you know that you need to do a little bit more of that mm. color in the following week and it just means like we think in pictures and we think in colors our mind works better like that and stories so yes. if you see it like that then you can see the colors you can see at a glance that these are the things that i need to focus on and in the following week and you'll see that if yours is just all in work colors add one social thing in there and I think it's important to do that it's good for your mindset it's good for your well-being as well and sometimes your social events might be around work I mean we've had a lovely catch-up earlier on lovely. today like before we've come on here and for me that was a social but then it's work related because we're here doing this so you can combine the two you right can yeah ha have catch up and coffee with people and you know it, it can be work related as well so just looking at my day to day there is already multiple colors on there that i can actually and I, I like what you mean with the colors you don't have to look too deeply into the page to see it is clear there okay this is my week there's too much of that or there's too little of that i like that and if something doesn't happen on that day don't put pressure on yourself like just move it over to the following the next There day. might be things that you've got deadlines um, and you know when you've got a deadline, I mean, you've been to university, you've got your degree, so you knew there was deadlines yeah. and so you had to meet those deadlines and um, it's just a matter of like knowing your windows of deadlines and knowing certain things that can be pushed over. Again, mm -hmm. it just comes down to mindset, just managing that, changing those light bulbs. Yeah. I think, yeah, it becomes paralyzing to think I have to change all this at once, but it's just that reminding one thing at a time. Um, other than a planner, do you have any other advice for people keeping on track with their goals? I think don't put too much pressure on yourself. Okay. If you feel that there's something that hasn't been done today and you need to do it the following day or it can be moved over to the following week, I think we stress a lot when we don't get something done as well. And so kind of understand that stress impacts your mental health and then it impacts your physical health. So as long as you're going yeah. through each day, but concentrate on the fact that you have to be well in your mind as well. Um, <clears throat> those are, I think those are quite important. So yes, planners, lists, however it works, you know, calendar like your um in your phone setting alarms right yeah um and i think if you 
made your list of all of the people that you want to contact and then set an alarm on a cal- on your calendar okay. that on this day I need to contact X and then make sure you do that when that alarm goes off. Don't okay. procrastinate and don't put it off until later. But if you set it for the same time every other day or you know that that time is coming. So then yeah. what you're doing is then changing that paradigm because you know at four o'clock on every other day or once a week that you've got to contact somebody. All you're going to do is look in your calendar and see who it is that you've got to contact. Mm-hmm. But you're now creating a new habit, which means you're creating a new paradigm. Right, okay, yeah. It's, and it, yeah, 100%. And it, does that have anything to do with, you know, does that improve discipline? Because that's something that I also struggle with. Again, just rep- repetition, we'll put it in place. Yeah. Okay. Because now what you're doing is creating new habits. Okay. And you're then getting rid of the old habits that were holding you back. Because I know you feel the guilt. And yeah. it's <laughs> sad that you feel that guilt because you're not doing it deliberately and there's not any you know you you empathize with these people and you want to reach out to these people but then you're feeling that it's been so long now how am I going to look if I don't contact these people yeah and there's also that element of like if I come in with a strong text of like I'm so sorry blah blah and they're like I didn't even really miss you (laughs) think about it and again that's just my own like insecurities my own like imposter syndrome I'm putting too much of, whereas I shouldn't be operating from that place, coming from a place of abundance. Yes, as opposed to a place of lack. What's the worst thing that can happen, though? Oh, do you know what it is? I feel like other people will give me the same amount of shame that I give myself, and my brain's like, I just can't handle any more shame. And that doesn't actually happen. I give myself the total shame. (laughs) The thing is, if you see it... That's what's holding you back as well. Um, But if you contact these people and then they don't respond, then that's okay. Is it? (laughs) (laughs) Of course it is, because you didn't contact contact them for so long. Yeah. So it's okay. They're allowed to kind of sit on it and think, well, do I even want to speak to you now? Um, And what's the worst thing? You still just won't have a friendship. So nothing has changed, (laughs) right? So that's the worst thing that can happen. The best outcome would be that they reply back. It might not be that they reply back straight away. So don't put that on yourself as well, that why haven't they replied for a week? But you didn't reply for a year. That's a a common ADHD thing. If you've not replied and then when you don't get your reply within a few minutes, you're like, you must hate me. Or then you they don't you? And then all of these other thoughts start coming into your mind don't they but this is the other thing that you've got to remember and I've mentioned before that with ADHD and all of the other things it's different your mind is different so don't put that pressure on yourself it's okay it's okay if somebody doesn't reach out it's okay if they don't get back to you straight away it's okay they might take six months to get back to you they might want to think about it yeah and that's okay as well just remembering these things (laughs) yeah but I said, the worst thing that can happen is there's no friendship or there's no communication. That means nothing's changed. Okay. The best case is that you rebuild. Okay. Yeah, I really appreciate that. <laughs> no, I really do. I uh, I miss I miss a lot of people, and it'd be really helpful to um, fix this thing about myself. Yeah, we'll we'll touch base in about six months and see where you're at. <laughs> see how many friends you've made again. <laughs> This is where I get to six months time and I'm like, oh my God, I've not done anything like it. <laughs> I'm joking. This is my, uh, my. Paradigm. I guess I'm my commitment. My, oh, okay, yeah. I'm making a stand here. This is where life changes. Yeah. And not to let that like paralyze me, the thought just, it's just one thing at a time. And then in six months time, it'll you, multiple things. Do you feel that you would work better if somebody checked in on you and said have you done this yeah but is that like I feel like a lot there's some people that I've asked that for in life and they've got to the point where they're like you're an adult can you just start doing it yourself and that's where I worry like I'd I, reminders from people are so helpful but why do I put why should I put that on someone 
they've got to remember their own stuff in life. Do you know what I mean? So yes, do I find that a comfortable tool to use? It just makes me feel bad. <laughs> but I think, and, and Lindsay's a great support with this with you, isn't she? Well, because um, like you said today, it, the only reason you really then contacted me is because Lindsay told you that I was waiting for you to contact me. <laughs> um, but sometimes it is just that you just need somebody to remind you. And even though you've set the alarm and you've got your planner and everything else in place, you just need a physical person to remind you that this needs to be done. And it might just be temporary. It might just be so that you can create those habits. And then after that, you're okay. You're good to go. I am. Maybe I employ a personal assistant. <laughs> I'm saying earlier, I want a PA. She's got a PA now. <laughs> I want a PA. But um, we have it's great. Yes. That's what I need. I need an admin person for my brain. Yeah. It'd be a great job, I think. I'm sure you could advertise it. Sure. Work experience. <laughs> Well, I feel like I've gone on about my own problems way too long now, but I also feel like you've given me some really helpful advice, some good tools to use. And I appreciate you coming from this from a point of, like you said, a victim of my own <laughs> actions. You could have easily been like, help yourself. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I really, I'm really thankful of this because I feel like this might be the catalyst to me getting back my friendships and anyone that wants to reply. <laughs> so I'm really thankful that you came to talk to us, especially from a very selfish point of view. But um, I love your delivery. I love your style. I've always been, since I met you, you've, you plant seeds in me and the penny just drops way quicker than, like I said, many lessons I've been taught over university that... They never really like sank in. Your delivery is great because you're very authentic. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the the big thing with all of the training is building that rapport with your delegates and making them feel comfortable as well and teaching them in a way that um, they're able to learn because yeah. not everybody learns the same way. And we've discussed this before as well, that some people learn better in a classroom, some people learn better online. Um, and this is why we are also like the courses that we offer are some of them are e-learning courses um, because some people learn better at home and some people like that, you know, peer learning as well. So some people learn better in a classroom. So, um, we stay authentic. I mean, the way I would deliver would be different to the way the other trainers would deliver. Mm -hmm. But everybody has a style of teaching and everybody has a style of learning. So it's just a matter of kind of finding the way that your learners want to learn. Okay, so there's going to be certain uh, students, learners that are more geared up to receive your style of teaching mm -hmm. than one of your colleagues, for example. Yeah. That's really good because I feel like we were talking earlier. The reason counselling always always feel, felt a little bit um, disconnected from me is because I'm not that. Yes. Okay. And how does that feel? I want to say, hey, hey, why are you thinking that? What are you doing with that? And that's very much like your approach. You know, if it's not something that's not serving you, get rid of it. And that's giving people advice, which counselling they say don't give people advice. Then why did I come to you? <laughs> it's the same, isn't it? When when you're working with somebody and it's, you know, the whole therapy side of things, they expect or they kind of imply that the answer is within you. And sometimes you go to somebody, a professional, because you want them to tell you how it is and you want them to give you that advice. And I think you've got a really niche style as well and you're super intelligent and you've got a lot of knowledge I've learned a lot from you as well oh. and I think you just you need to share it okay. I think you really need to just and like I said you don't need to fit into that box you don't need to fit into a box of that psychotherapist like all the others are you don't need to be like all the other counsellors you you can be your own go and create what you've got, which is totally different to what, that's your USP. 
that's your personality and the way you teach and the way you talk to people. It, you're just so different. And I think you need to kind of okay. really, really focus on that and explore that and put it out there. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. And I don't, I've been spent the last year trying to take compliments better. And I'm, I feel like I'm actually doing it. Like, doing I'm like, really well. thank you. And I really do appreciate it. <laughs> Um, and I hope if there's anyone listening that you're wanting to you feel like I want to do something, but you're putting your own paradigms in the way. I can't do that. I don't have enough money, blah, blah, blah. I hope you've listened to this conversation and taken away that you can. Yes. 100%. It's all about mindset, holding yourself accountable, doing these little things one at a time so that you can keep your uh, thermostat <laughs> set at 30. Um or at least, no, allowing it to move. I'm trying to work with the... Uh... It's changing the thermostat. So where it's set at always being late, now just go back and change it. So when things do change for you, it then goes back to always being on time. 100%. And yeah, I feel like l learning from you to just trust your authentic self rather than trying to fit into a box that we're never going to fit in. We're different. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah. I really appreciate that. And I don't want to take up any more of your time. So I hope we get to chat and do this again in the future. Absolutely. Great. Yes. Anything uh, you want to make with, uh, for, your count, uh, for your training, sorry, uh, we'd be more than happy to come and film with you or set something up with you. That'd be awesome. Definitely. I think we'll have to touch base in a few months again and see where you're at with keep me communication definitely and I, i'm hoping definitely uh, that you'll be able to coach me yes yes absolutely i think the the, the offer's there isn't it so I'll take it yeah 100 <laughs> find out that this last year we're changing things now it's it's a new thing i'm accepting it and i'm going to make a note to get back to you and say hey when are you free for this i'm going to do it so you know my first intent. And when you get that text, you'll be like, she's changing. Or you'll text me and say, you're not going <laughs> to message me. No, definitely. I think work together. I think you just need somebody to guide you. And I think, honestly, I think that you'd be great with where you want to go. Right. You know what? I agree. <laughs> Once I've had this, uh, this coaching, just try and stop. <laughs> see where we go but for now i'm gonna hand it back to the studio where future me is talking to Lindsay during a 12-hour stream why did we doing a 12-hour stream what is wrong with us <laughs> it's a long stream so i'll send you back to the thank you very much serge for joining us the link in the description to any way that you'd like to get in contact with serge for your own company's training needs uh we strongly recommend that you use them and keep your employees safe and happy. Uh, back to the studio. <laughs>